Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk a little bit about pawns. There are different pawns in the framework and we are going to create a short tutorial covering all of them. I chose to start with the desktop pawn because it's, it's quite simple and I don't have much time today. So let's start with the desktop pawn. Like with the other pawns, you can define what pawn you want to use in a level in the info. So let's remove this here. In every level, if you remember the level setup, we have this info file and in there we have a level key. Inside of that level key, we can define the pawn types. We have a pawn for desktop, one for VR and one for mobile. The other settings not relevant right now, only this three here. And you can see we have some example pawns here for desktop, VR and mobile. If we click on the desktop, you can see all those pawns here are actually desktop pawns you can use. So we have our very basic um, top level desktop pawn and we have one for the camera and one for a char basically. So in there are the core functionalities for the desktop pawn. You most likely don't need to work in this. I would say you should either use the desktop camera pawn or the desktop char pawn. And let me show you the difference. Let's go with the char first. So if I hit play now and I'm not in VR, you can see, first of all, I have the mouse here. And if I move around, you can see, okay, this is working, but the mouse is totally free. That's because we have different interaction modes for the mouse. So right now, a lot of users want to have a free mouse and not control the camera. So you can just press here and for example, drag the sliders or pull those things here out without actually moving the camera. So that works quite good. You can see all this grabbing and snapping and things like that are working without any problems. I can also, while dragging, I can move the mouse wheel up and down to move the object further away or closer. But if I want to switch to the camera mode, I press the alt button and now I have this crosshair here in the middle. And if I move, move the mouse, you can see that also my screen here is moving and now I can grab the things like this. For me, it's the preferred method of interaction here, but as you may know, every client wants something different. So we decided to integrate both options here and you can just switch between them every time by pressing the alt button. Another thing I wanted to show you is if you grab something with the mouse wheel, move it further away or closer, but you can also, if you grab it and press the right mouse button and turn the mouse left or right, you can rotate objects even in the desktop mode. That's quite cool. And most of the things are actually completely working in desktop too. Of course, there are things that are really unique to VR, like the radial menu, everything with the motion controllers or the grab poses with the hands. But you most likely are able to create like 90% of your experience with the desktop pawn. And it's really cool because they share the complete same methods. So you don't need to create a separate desktop application and a separate VR application. You can just develop one of them and it will work in VR, it will work in desktop, it will work in mobile. So for example, here I have the snapping and everything is working like it should. Okay, if we open up the data asset again, I told you that I would create child of either the char or the camera. Let me quickly show you the camera. It's basically the same interaction, but this pawn doesn't have any capsule collider. So you can just fly around here. You can go up and down with E and Q. At least that's our settings here. But you can interact the same way, like with the other one. 
And yeah, that's basically the difference between those two. I would say you should not directly use them, but create a child of them. So for example, let's create a new desktop pawn here for this dragon level. I right click, create a child blueprint class and say, okay, this is the BP pawn desktop drag example. We open it up. So here we have the basic setup of the desktop pawn. And you can see we have this capsule component. So first of all, let's do some quick adjustment because right now it's super small. We would be on the floor in this case here. Let's actually change that. So let's search for the height of the capsule. And for demonstration purposes, let's set this to something like 300. So in this case, now I have a really big pawn. Remember that we need to associate this pawn with the level. We do it in the level key. So we open it up and assign our pawn desktop drag example into the desktop pawn, hit save. If I hit play now, you can see I'm pretty large now. And we are using Unreal's default movement for this. So everything you can do with the Unreal movement component, that's this one here, you can do with this pawn. For example, if you want to say that we, this pawn here should be fast, let's search for walking speed and set the max walk speed to something like double the amount, maybe. And now I'm not only tall, but also very fast. And there are a lot of things you can do with this um, character from, from Unreal here. So with the movement and all the character attributes, there are a lot of great tutorials about that. So I'm not going to cover this here. But yeah, these are basically the, the two pawns you can create for desktop. One thing that might be interesting is we can add a UI to this pawn. So a little hut. It's called the component hut. Let's add it in here. And in there, we can create a new hut. For the name, let's do something like, well, let's just test 42. We could translate all of this, but we are going to create a separate tutorial about that. So don't worry about the data table here. Here we can design what widget we actually want to show. So let's use the, uh, yeah, let's go with the multiplayer for now and add a little frame. So hot frame on the left, hit compile and save. And if we hit play now, you can see we have this nice little hut on the top left side. It's called test 42. I can collapse it or expand it. And if I press on it, well, it's multiplayer. So we get our multiplayer sessions here where we can enter an IP address or something like that. Search for servers. Well, okay. I don't have any servers, of course, right now. But yeah, this is working perfectly fine. Or uh, let's add another one, call it debug and search for the debug widget. And now we have two different HUD elements, the test 42 and our debug one. Oh, we need to add a frame in there. Forgot to do that. Let's also use the frame left and hit play. And here you can see we have our debug widget where we have the actual game mode, the game state, player controller, things like that. Which pawn we are using. So here we can do a little trace debug. And everything is working like it should. 
Okay. Like I said, the tutorial about the pawn setup for the desktop pawn is straightforward. But one thing to make sure is you save yourself a lot of headache if you really don't use the default ones or the parent ones. It's much better if you create a child blueprint class out of this. This way you also make sure to be compatible if we do a 4.1 for example. It's much more likely that nothing will break if you work on your own child instead of the parent actor. Okay, thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial. Bye!